Hi guys, I welcome you all to the another video of software testing by MKT. So in this video, we are going to talk about software development life cycle. Before we start with this video, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Let's get started. So in this video, we are going to talk about what do you mean by software development life cycle. See, as the name suggests, software development life cycle. Whenever software, any company is developing, what all stages is it goes through? That is called a software development life cycle. Actual definition says that software development life cycle, it is a step by step procedure or a standard procedure to develop any new software is called a software development life cycle. Now why company should follow SDLC software development life cycle or what will happen if they don't follow SDLC. If company don't follow SDLC, they will not come to know what is the requirement first of all. They will not get to know how much money to invest in it they will not get to know what will be the profit or loss at the end of the uh, at the end and they will not get to know how many engineers they need to involve in making that software so for that purpose company always follow software development life cycle so if we talk about the stages we have in software development life cycle the stages we have are listen clearly guys the first stage is called as requirement collection first stage is called as requirement collection that means now the question arises who do the requirement collection requirement collection is done by product analyst product analyst is the person who will be in the product based companies and business analyst is the person who will do the requirement collection in the service based company i am going to take example of ba that is business analyst talking about the service level service based companies okay so ba business analyst he will go to the customer place, he will collect the requirement in the business language. He will come back to the company, convert everything he has understood in the business language to technical things and he gonna explain it to the technical team. Technical team consisting of architects, developers, product head that is product managers and uh, QA, QA engineers. This, is, this was the first step. The second stage of SDLC is called as feasibility study. Now feasibility study is nothing but in this stage they define whether to take up the project. If they are going to take up the project are they going to get any profit or not. So this is the stage where they decide whether to take up the project or not. This stage consisting of different teams. The first, the first one, the first person is called as product head or product manager. The second is finance team, HR team, architects and BA, business analyst. These are the people who decide whether to take up the project or not. They mainly talk about three things. Whether they have enough resources to take up the project. When I talk about resources, I mean whether they have proper engineers, developers and QA to take up the project or not. Do they have, second is, do they have proper lab setups or not? Do they have proper lab setups or not? I mean, if they take up the project, lab setups required. Are they having it? And the third is, which are they having the technology to take up the project or not? So they decide on these three mainly things to decide whether to take up the project or not. Now I'm going to talk about the role of product manager. He is the person who will take the data from business uh, analyst architect, finance team and a chat team and he is the person who will decide whether to take up the project or not. How? I'm going to. BA. BA is the person who will collect the requirement as I have already said. His role is to collect the requirement. He is going to uh, requirement and uh, architect is the person who will think from the technical point of view. That means which technology to follow to take up the project. Finance team. They will think from the money point of view. If they are going to take up the project, are they going to get any profit or not? If they invest this much of money, are they going to return anything? Are they going to get profit? So, an HR team. HR team, uh, technical team is the people who will tell that they require these many engineers to in the project. So, uh, it is the job of the HR team to hire those people. He will collect product head, that is product, product manager. He will uh, take the data from everyone and he will decide whether to take up the project or not. This is a feasibility study. I have explained in a very easy language. Third third stage of software development life cycle is called as design. Design is mainly done by architect. In design, we have two things. 
One is high level design, another one is low level design. High level design is the designing the architecture of the application. How the application look, will look like. That is called as high level design. If I talk about the low level design, how each and every modules will look like. That is called as low level design. So I hope, I mean, if I'm going to give you an example, you guys will understand it in a very better way. Let's take example that I have, I have bought a site. I have bought a site. Now I have decided that I'm going to construct in that, I'm going to construct one room, one hall, one kitchen, two washrooms, one lawn, one parking area. This is my, dis I mean, I have decided these are the things I'm going to make in my site, which I have bought. That is called as high level design. Now what is low level design? Suppose my site is like this. This is the entrance. I will be having my first room here. With that attached washroom will be there. With that attached living room should be there. With that attached kitchen should be there. Here lawn should be there. Here parking should be there. Talking everything in detail is called as low level design. I'm going to give you one more example. Let's talk about WhatsApp. WhatsApp is having an option called as select a contact and send a message. They also have an option of attachment. That is called as high level design. If I'm going to talk about low level design, if I click on attachment, it is having multiple options in it. Let's say it is having an option of selecting an image, video, document, location, files. They have multiple options to select. So that is called as low level design. I'm talking in depth. That talking, if, if I'm talking about any software in depth, that is called as low level design. I'm going to give you one more example. Talking about uh, Gmail. Gmail is having an option of composing a mail, sent mail, outbox, spam, logout, login. That is called as high level design. Now what is low level design? If I'm going to do a compose mail, it will be having an option called as to, to whom I'm sending. From, that will be my mail ID. BC, BCC, subject, body, attachment, send button, cancel button, signature. That is called as role level design. I hope it is very understandable, right? So once the design phase is completed, the fourth stage in software development lifecycle says that coding. Coding has to be done. Developer will start writing the code by seeing the low level design and the requirement. And always remember, business analyst, he is the bridge between the customer and the developers. So once after the coding is done, the fifth stage of software development lifecycle is called as testing, which we will be doing it. Once the testing is done, software is working perfectly fine, we are going to release it. That comes the sixth stage. The sixth stage is called as installation and implementation. Our site engineers, site engineers, field engineers, they will go to the customer's place, install the software, make it ready so that customer can start their running their business with the help of their software. That is called installation in, installation or implementation. Clear? Great. Coming to the seventh stage, that is called as maintenance phase. The last stage of software development life cycle is called as maintenance phase. Maintenance is mainly done by developer and QA. Now I'm going to tell you what do you mean by maintenance phase. Once we have given the software to the customer, there will be a service level agreement for six months or one year. That means while using the software, if customer is facing any defect, if customer is facing any problem and you want to change it, it, it will be written in the service level agreement that we will be providing our maintenance to them for a period of six months or one year. So we will be developing it, developer will be developing it, test engineers will test it and we will give a new software to the customer over a period of service level agreement, how, how many period it is having, six months or one year. Done. Once after service level agreement is over, if customer wants to do any modification in the software, they have to pay it and get it. So that is called a software development life cycle. I hope it is very clear. I have explained in a very easy language. If you have any question, please reach out to me. I have added my 
Gmail ID in the link description. I have added my Quora profile in the link description. I have added my uh, blog in the link description. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe the video and share the video with any friends.